In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a simple stop tracker. There are many ways to do this. The one I'll be showing is simple, it looks great, and anyone can do it. Tracking your stocks is essential to knowing how much you've made, or worse, lost in the stock market. Everything will be covered here in this video. Make sure to subscribe down below to see more content just like this. It really helps the channel and helps me create more content just like this. Let's get into it. Start by opening a fresh window in Google Sheets. If you haven't done this before, simply go to the Google homepage, click the nine dots in the top right of the screen, and select Sheets. At the bottom right, hover and click the pencil. That will take you to a fresh window. The first thing that I want you to do is to have a think about which exchanges you're likely to trade on. Among the most common would be the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange, the Australian Securities Exchange, and the London Stock Exchange. We now need to create a list. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'll include the New Zealand and Australian exchanges, the NASDAQ, and the New York Stock Exchange. Now we need to provide a code representing each exchange, allowing Google to retrieve our real-time stock data. Google has conveniently provided a list of the exchanges and their codes that they cover on their website. I'll include a link to it down below in the video description. For our purposes, the New Zealand Exchange is the NZE, Australia is the ASX, NASDAQ is of course NASDAQ, and the New York Exchange is the NYSE. At this point, I also like to key in the currency of the exchange. In this case, we have the combination of the Kiwi, Aussie, and US dollar. We can get real-time currency exchange values using the Google Finance formula here. My home currency is the New Zealand dollar, so I'll calculate the exchange rate for that. Next to AUD in cell D3, type an equal sign, then Google Finance is a single word with no spaces. This is Google's proprietary formula that tells it to search for data online. Microsoft has their own version built into Office 365 under a stocks button. Use an open bracket and a quotation mark, then type NZD AUD. Start with your home currency tag, in this case NZD, and finish with the currency you're changing from, here AUD. Close out with another quotation mark and close the bracket. Once you press the return key, you should see the exchange rate appear. We can copy this formula down next to USD and replace the AUD with USD in the formula. We now get the exchange rate against the US dollar as well. In your spreadsheet, you can do this for every currency you trade in. This will come in handy later. Once that is done, we can create a new tab. This is where we will build our tracker. Simply click the plus button down at the bottom of the screen and a new tab should appear. Feel free to call it whatever you like. I'll just call mine Tracker. I'll also change the original to Exchanges. Now in the Tracker tab, we can make our table. Starting in cell A1, we write Ticker. In cell B1, we can type Exchange. And in C1, we type Code. This is the basic format for defining the stocks we own in our portfolio. Under Exchange, we'll do something a bit crafty. Simply click the cell below where we typed Exchange. Now go to the Data button at the top of the screen and click Data Validation. Now we click the button on the right of the screen, Add Rule. Under Criteria, select drop down from a range. In the field below, select the four box symbol. We now need to select the range of exchange codes we typed earlier. Simply select the exchanges tab, then highlight the cells that have the codes in them. Then we click OK. We have now created a drop down menu with our exchange options. We can also assign colors. For example, I can make the New Zealand exchange green, the Australian yellow, the NASDAQ blue, and the New York Stock Exchange red. In our tracker, when we select an exchange, the color will come through. Let's give it a go. Head back to the tracker tab. Under ticker, write MSFT. Now under exchange, select the NASDAQ exchange. Under code, we need to write a formula. Start by typing an equal sign and then select the NASDAQ field. Now use the ampersand key, also known as the and sign. Use a quotation mark, a colon, and then another quotation mark. Now we must use another ampersand sign and finally select the MSFT cell, then press the return key. Now we should have a funky code appear. This is used by Google throughout the tracker to retrieve the real-time data. Now we need a couple new headings. In cell D1, write name. In cell E1, write stock price. And in cell F1, write currency. Under the new name heading, in cell D2, we use the Google Finance formula again. Simply use an equal sign Type Google and finance is a single word with no spaces. Use a bracket and select our code. Here we'll need to lock the column reference. You can either press the F4 key here three times to lock the column reference or 
you can manually write the dollar sign in front of the C in the formula. After we've done that, we can then use a comma and in quotation marks, type name. When we press the return key, you should now see the name of Microsoft Corp pair. If you haven't already noticed, the MSFT that we keyed into cell A2 refers to the ticker of Microsoft. They're the first company we are adding to our tracker. Now in cell E2, we can retrieve the latest stock price for Microsoft. Simply copy our cell in D2 and paste it into cell E2, changing the name reference to the word price. The latest stock price of Microsoft should now appear. Once that's done, we must make reference to the currency of the stock price. If you remember, we made a note of this in the exchanges tab. In cell F2, key in an equal sign, then type in X and look up with no spaces. Use a bracket, then select cell B2, where NASDAQ is written, followed by a comma. Now jump over into the Exchanges tab. Select the whole B column by selecting the B at the top of the page, and insert a comma and repeat for column C. Close the brackets, use the return key, and you should see the USD loading. We now know that the Microsoft stock is on the NASDAQ exchange, which is denominated in the US dollar. We now need to specify the number of shares that we own in Microsoft. In cell G1, type holdings. Under this, in cell G2, type the number of shares that we own. Here, for example, let's use 50. Moving along, in cell H1, type average trade price. This represents the average price you've paid for the 50 shares in Microsoft that we own. This is often provided by your broker, but if it's not, simply divide the amount you've paid for the stock by the number of shares that you own. For example, if you paid $10,000 for 50 shares, your average price is $200 per share. Now we want to key that figure into cell H2. We can now calculate a few useful fields. In cell I1 through to L1, type current value, cost basis, gain slash loss, and a dollar sign, then gain slash loss, and a percent sign. If we go down to cell I2, multiply our holdings in cell G2 with the current stock price in cell E2. We should now see the current value of our Microsoft shares. This, of course, is denominated in the US dollar. We now want to convert this to our home currency. Opening up the formula again, add a multiplication sign at the end. Now type XLOOKUP as a single word with an open bracket. Select the currency in column F, here, USD, then a comma. Now jump into the exchanges tab and select the C column. Use a comma, then select the D column and close with a bracket. Now we have the value of our investment in our home currency, in this case, the New Zealand dollar. In the next cell across, we calculate the amount that we invested in Microsoft shares initially. We multiply our average trade price in cell H2 with our holdings in G2. We now use a multiplication sign and repeat the X lookup formula used before in the current value column. Again, select the currency cell, then jump over into the exchanges tab select the C column, and then the D column, closing with a bracket and pressing the return key. Now we can calculate our gain or loss on our Microsoft investment in our home currency. Please note that this currency doesn't consider the loss or gain we made on currency exchange. We're simply assuming that we buy and sell at the same exchange rate. In cell K2, simply take the current value and subtract the cost basis. This shows us whether the value of our investment in Microsoft has gone up or down. In cell L2, take the cell K2 and divide this by the cost basis. This shows us our percent return. If it's positive, we've made money. And if it's negative, we've lost money. It can be cool here to add conditional formatting. Highlighting cell L2, go to Format up the top in Conditional Formatting. Under Format Rules, select Greater Than. In Value or Formula, input is zero. The formatting style should be set to green. Then click done. Now click add another rule. Under format rules, this time select less than. Again, key in a zero. The formatting style should now be selected as red. Clicking done, you now have a cell that will change color depending on whether the value of your investment has gone up or down. Now we have a row of investment data for Microsoft. Let's add in another couple investments. Copy the row and paste it in rows three and four. Let's now add an investment from Australia and New Zealand. In cell A3, type in RIO, and then in the next cell, select ASX. Under that, ANZ and NZE. We now have Rio Tinto and ANZ bank stocks loading through in our home currency. Now we are ready to create a portfolio summary. Select the top five rows, right click, and select insert five rows above. Here we want to summarize our portfolio data. Start by typing in portfolio value. Next to this, type in an equal sign, 
then sum and open bracket and select column I. Close the brackets and we have our portfolio value expressed in our home currency. If we sold our entire portfolio, this is the amount we'd receive before fees of course in our home currency. In row two, type cost basis. Next to this, create another sum formula this time taking column J. Now we have the amount that we initially invested in our portfolio. Below that, in row three, type portfolio return with a dollar sign. Simply subtract the cost basis we calculated above from the portfolio value. This shows us how much we've made from our portfolio. Repeat the header underneath, but changing the dollar sign for a percent sign. In brackets, select the portfolio value divided by the cost basis. Closing the bracket, insert a minus one, and we should have a decimal place. Highlighting a random cell in column L, use the format painter and then click our decimal. The format should change to percent, and the conditional formatting comes across as well. Now we get an overall view of our portfolio value and returns over the life of our portfolio. Now let's create some charts to show off our portfolio. First, let's look at our portfolio composition. Simply go to insert up the top and select chart. Bring up the editor and under data range, select the entire table of data that we set up. Under chart type, select pie chart. Now you want to unselect switch rows and columns as well as the bottom one for labels. Under value, select current value here. We are now left with a graph showing the percentage of our portfolio in each stock. As you can see, most of our funds are in Microsoft stock. If we create another graph, we can show how each of our holdings has contributed to our current portfolio value. Select our entire data set again under the data range and change the chart type to waterfall chart. Under stacking, change this to stack. Start removing fields from the series section, leaving just the cost basis and the gain slash loss with the dollar sign. In the chart, we can see the amount we initially invested and how each of the stocks has contributed to our portfolio value, considering the cost and the returns. Now we have two great looking charts that show us both the composition of our portfolio and the gains on each of the stocks that has led to our portfolio value. The next step is optional, but looks really cool in a tracker. If you are stuck, I've included the formula down below in the video description. We basically want to create a graph showing the price movement over the past year for each stock in our portfolio. In cell M7, right chart. Now, well away from our table, we'll build out our formula. Start with an equal sign, type Google Finance, then a bracket. Select the cell with our code for Microsoft, followed by a comma. In quotation marks, type price, followed by another comma. Now type the word today, followed by an open and close bracket then a minus sign, and then type 365. If you want to see a chart for a different time period from a year, type the number of days here. You could use seven for a week, or maybe 30 for about a month. We can now use another comma. Then once again, type today, followed by an open bracket, and two closed brackets. Pressing the return key, we start to see a whole lot of data coming through. This is the list of stock prices over the past 365 days. From this, we only require the stock prices themselves which we can achieve with the index formula. Clicking on the newly created date cell before the Google Finance, type it index followed by an open bracket. At the back of the formula, type two commas followed by a two, then close it off with another bracket. Pressing the return key, you can now see that we just have the pricing data. Now, if we go to the new close cell, type sparkline as one single word before the index, followed by an open bracket. At the back of the formula, type a closed bracket. Pressing the return key, we've managed to turn the data into a chart, all within a cell. This by itself is pretty neat and it's fine to leave it just like this. What I prefer, however, is seeing this with shading. Simply at the back of the formula, delete the final bracket using a comma, then add an open brace, then type chart type as a single word in quotation marks, then a comma, then type column in quotation marks, a semicolon, then type color in American spelling without the U in quotation marks, then a comma, followed by any color in quotation marks. Here, I'll use teal. Close the formula with a closed brace and a closed bracket and press return. We now have an awesome chart showing us the price movement of Microsoft stock in the past year. So that's our stock tracker. If this is hard and you'd prefer to pay for a service to handle this for you, ShareSite offer a great online solution which scrapes your trade directly from your broker. 
saving you lots of work. They have offered my subscribers four months free on their annual plan, so make sure to check them out using the link down below and in the video description. I hope this video was useful, and if it was, please make sure to subscribe down below. It really helps the channel to grow, allowing me to put more time into creating videos just like this. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.